Yes, if you are ready for me, are you ready, ladies and gentlemen? If you are ready for me, go to the chat room and say, I am ready. Go to the chat room and type, I am ready. I won't move until I get that. I won't move until I get that. Go to the chat. Yes, I am ready. I am ready. Excellent. Excellent. I want to share my screen now. Please give me feedback if you see my screen. Um, please give me feedback. If you see my screen. Can you see my screen? Your screen is paused. Okay, why is it paused? Sharing, come again. Can you see my screen, please? Your screen is not coming up. Okay, please hold on for me. Okay, can you see my screen now? You should be able to see my screen now. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, you can see my screen, excellent. Okay, okay. I want you to, is, is the screen moving? Is my screen moving? Is my screen moving? Okay, excellent. So ladies and gentlemen, um this evening we want to talk about the cash crops that has potential come 2022 and uh, before i do that I, I, will, I will be sharing with us why we need to consider agribusiness why need, we need to diversify for those of us that are already assisting farmers you know doing one or two things in the agribusiness sector i want to quickly share with us reason why we do what we need to diversify reason why we need to diversify so this evening we need to look at what we call the current economic reality you know i was discussing with somebody today and i said this is the time for us to wake up as as a, as, as a person in this country nigeria can you see my screen is it moving is it moving okay Look at my screen, ladies and gentlemen, and let us take all this together. The projected population, what is our population as today? What is our population in Nigeria? Um, two, two, 200 million, some people will say 250. We don't even know our population, but I'm saying that it's, it's been projected that by 2050, which is 29 you know, years away, and let me say 28 days, because we have few days to 2022. 29 years from now, our population in this country will be 402 million. A country that cannot feed itself at, you know, the current population of 200 million in 29 years. If you are 50 years old here, you are going to be alive by that time, except if there is accident or something. We are talking 29, just 29 years from now. We are going to be 250. Hello? We are going to be 250. So the meaning of this is we have to diversify. This is the time for us to do what to diversify. Nigeria is the number one country with the highest number of poor people. It used to be India, but now it's, it's Nigeria is number one. The reason for us to begin to look at the most sustainable you know, part of our economy, which is agribusiness, is huge now. This is the time to do it. Third quarter 2020, we split into second recession. This recession is like part and parcel of us these days. I don't know why. Recession, recession here and there. Recession here and there. Now, the GDP, can you see the screen, please? Can you? I need good feedbacks. 
I can't see your screen, sir. Screen is not moving. Screen is not moving. Please, I need somebody to help me, please. Am I being diverse opinion here? Please. Is, can, they see, can you see my screen? Okay. Screen is not moving. Yes. But you can see what I'm talking about, right? Okay. Okay. You know, the GDP recorded the growth of 0.5%. Can you imagine 0.5%? Why are our standard debt has risen to 33 trillion as of March? Why am I, am I wasting your time? No, I'm building a, a you know, laying the foundation here for you to know that whatever it is you are handing now, whatever it is you're doing, you need to diversify. And I'm bringing to you a sector you can diversify into, which is agribusiness. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying, go into crop production because it requires less time, less energy, you know, huge investment at the initial stage, but comfortability for a period of time. NYC mobilized 300,000 yields each year. I was telling somebody recently, I said, God forbid, a time will come that the core members will be posted to Babin Saloon. A back interest rate is 20% as of today. A dollar, I put 500. I don't know how much a dollar is in your area. But what I'm trying to say is to let you know that we are in a big mess in this country. And we need to what? Instead of complaining, we need to do what? We need to look at what we can do. Current reality. I believe my slide is moving, right? Did it move? The current reality. My slide, did it move? Can you see current reality on the screen? Oh God. Did it move now? Can you see did it, the, the slide? Did it move? I don't know what's going on with my screen. I don't know what is really going on. Yes, you can see me, yes. But you can't see my slide again. I don't know why. Can you see the slide now? Can you see the slide? But you can see me. I don't know what is going on. Speak, we can hear you. Speak. Okay. My slide is pausing. I don't know what is going on. Just hold on for me, please. I'll, I'll get it sorted out now. These are tech issues. Get it sorted out now. So this evening we want to look at potentials want to look at crops that has the potential. But before that, I want you to know, reason why I choose these four crops and the demand across board, both locally and, um, and internationally. You know, a lot of demand are for these crops and we can grow this easily. Then for those of you that won't be coming into production, we'll be looking at the value addition. You know, we'll be looking at the, across the whole value addition. And um, at the end of the day, we see what we can, what we can do. It's so unfortunate that this is happening, but I believe we are going to get it. Can you see it now? Yes, you should be able to see my screen now. 
Can you see my screen now? Yes, okay. I want to also do another thing and say, if you can see it again by, can you see the screen now? Okay, is it moving? Is it moving? No. Okay. Is it move? Did it move now? No. Yes, but not moving. Yes, but not moving, okay. Can you see, can you see the screen? Can you see, see the screen, please? Please give me feedback, please. Can you see it now? It's, it's moving now, right? It's moving now? Okay, so as I was saying the other time, I said the current reality, current reality, you can see that on your screen now. Yes, current reality. Yes, okay, thank you. Now, the current reality is that we have no choice but to diversify. Um, different things you can diversify into, but for me, the most sustainable is agribusiness. Sorry for that, we're not going to have any break again. The most sustainable is what is agribusiness. But let's quickly look at this. Let's quickly look, look at this, and I want you to tell me whether it is true or not. Look at my screen. What I have on the screen, is it true or not? Is it true, ladies and gentlemen, is it true? Most people earn less than they spend. They get paid only 12 times in a year, but they spend 365 days the same year. True or false? True or false? Give it to me, please. Give it to me. True or false? True or false? <laughs> the reason why you need to, because most times, like, yes, I can. There are a lot of opportunity across the agribusiness valuation, a lot a lot of opportunity. But most people don't even come near, they can agree, agree. The first thing that comes to your mind is, yes, what is a Greek? Um, I'm not really interested that, but you have no choice. Let me tell you, you have to look at it. Two things that it, it, it will do for you, especially crop, two things. Crop will help you, you know, to invest that little fund you have. The first you get the foundation right by getting the very, you know, good land with all the documentation. You are getting your crops, they are doing very fine, excellently well. And in, in, in 10 years or 20 years, the property at, on which you have your farm now will become good. And that big city today used to be some people's village. The city where you live today used to be some people's village before. So whenever you have your farm in 10 years time, that is another money on its own. It's like it's called land banking. You are banking the land. Currently, you are using the land. You know, you are planting, you are doing your coconut, you are doing your avocado, you are doing your cashew, you are doing your cola, uh, bitter cola. And these are crops that will stand 30 years, 40 years. So imagine you are in your 40s and you start this journey. You know, by the time you are in, you know, five years' time, you're reaping this and you can get the result for the next 25, 30 years. And you can then decide to say, yes, I mean, my 70s now, 80s, I'm tired. Let me turn this land to real estate. Am I communicating, ladies and gentlemen? Am I communicating? Look at this reality again. Let's look at this reality again. Reciprocity keep increasing. Why our income, you know, remain constant? I don't know about you, but this happens to me. You see, your responsibility, your kids are growing up. The things you can do two, three years ago, you can't do them again because, you know, the responsibility is increasing every day. Even when you have the money, things you need to use the money for is becoming bigger and bigger. Your kids are in nursery school. You think you are paying? Yeah, 
By the time they go to secondary, you will see, by the time they go to university, you want them to go to private school, you want them to travel, you just begin to spend. And the whole thing we done on you, especially the civil servant listening to me today, that you are not currently doing anything. You're just, you know, working and you're getting paid and you're planning on that. It is not sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, look at an average person. Look at an average human being. Look at an average human being. Look at it. This is you. This is me. This is an average Nigeria. We have a body on us, a body of one income. If you are the type that have that, then tonight you're welcome because I want to expose you to things you can do, crops you can consider and do, the things in the value chain you can do to make good money for yourself, you know, as an extra income. Look at these ladies and gentlemen. If this does not apply to you, then this meeting is not for you. You can just please excuse yourself. Am I communicating? Please give me feedback in the chat room. Am I making sense? Am I making sense? Am I making sense at all? Yes. Look at it. Transport feeding, school, house rent. Some people will say, yes, I live in my own apartment. I keep, I tell people, for those of us that live in our own apartment, we even pay more rent than people that stay. You know, you have to do one or two things in your house. Just this evening, in this same house, this evening, something very, very expensive just got burnt. Can you imagine? And it has to be replaced. Medical bills, you never publish your clothing, your phone bills, your monthly internet, and the village people. Ladies and gentlemen, having given you this foundation, we are now moving towards to the business of the day. The business of the day. You see, when we talk about agribusiness, agribusiness is quite different from agriculture. Agribusiness is a deliberate type of thing, is the business of agriculture. You don't really need passion to be in agribusiness, like every other business. Passion is very, very good. It keeps you when the challenges come, because challenges will always come. It keeps you, but I tell people, passion does not put food on the table. Hello? Am I making sense? It doesn't put food on the table. It helps you to keep you going, but it doesn't put food. It's the business. And you have to undo agriculture as a business. You must handle agriculture as what as a business. This is what I've done, you know, over and over in my life for over a decade. And I understand agribusiness like the back of my hand. And that is why today it is time for us to talk about cash crop. We have other things, you know, we have vegetables, legumes, and the rest. But I want us to talk about cash crop. What is cash crop, ladies and gentlemen? Cash, cash crop is any crop that a farmer sells. For money rather than holding it for the you know for family use or to feed your animal or to exchange it you know deliberately that i am planting this i am producing this for money that is cash crop how many cashew on an acre can you eat alone or your family can eat alone so you know from the one you know that i'm doing this i'm doing this for money it's an investment I'm, you know, considering my input, I'm also considering my output. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. What is the importance of cash crops? The importance of cash crops is massive. You see, we make a lot of money. You say agri, um, the GDP, the contribution of agri to so, 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 so. It is not a way to that is contributing that. Hello? It is not um, pepper that is contributing that. It is not tomatoes that is contributing that. It, 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 those things that we are exporting that is contributing that. The cash crop. Anything a farmer sells for money, anything a country sells you know, to another country for money, the importance of cash crop is huge. Cash crops are essential part of a sustainable you know, intensification as income generated with cash crop provide farm household with means to save and invest in more productive farms. The big equipment you see are purely you know, for cash crop because you are talking of acres, hectares, uh, and the rest. Cash crops may have you know, you know, a catalyst effect on agri innovation as they add value and productivity to the rural area. I told you that it's going to be a very nice time that we are going to have together today. Hello. So please get your pen and paper. 
write down your questions because we are going practical. I'm not here to talk story. We want to go practical into these four crops. And I want to share with you why I picked these four crops. Now, we are going to start with, we are going to start with beta cola. Beta cola. Everybody type beta cola. I want to know those that are with me. Type beta cola, beta cola, beta cola. I explained some things about beta cola. The rest, I didn't write anything about them. I want to talk to you from my experience. But on beta cola, I wrote some things there. Things, you know, beta cola happens to be uh, an underdog. I don't know if that is correct. Something that we don't even think about. Something we don't even talk about. But it's just us going on. Beta cola, yes, the health benefit is good for this, it's good for that, it's good for this. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to answer me. Have you ever seen a commercial beta cola farm in Nigeria before? Have you? We are 51 here, right? Yeah, 51. Have you ever seen? Yes, 56, yeah. Have you ever seen? Not really. Mr. Lawali Olale can say, not really. Not really. Thank God, say no. And beta cola, you know, fetch a lot of money locally and internationally. You see, one thing, three, four years ago, I discovered something that is unique about this country called Nigeria. For me, growing up in the business, there is this thing that, you know, I believe, and I know that most of you believe, that anything that we don't do commercially, anything we don't do commercially, that means uh, there's something wrong with it. Hello, the Yoruba speaker in the house, like, ah, product in uh, crop in now and then that means something is wrong i used to believe that the things we don't do or grow in nigeria or we don't do on a big scale then there's something wrong with it and that is the belief of an average farmer but that is not true i got to know you know four years ago when i ventured into as avocado when i started my research on avocado and i was like why are we not doing this we were not doing it because we don't have the information the government does not understand the business of agribusiness and uh, the business of agriculture. No, they don't understand the business. And individuals are so, so busy looking for what to eat. And without, you know, we are not supposed to be doing the research. Individuals are not supposed to be the one doing research. Our research institutes are supposed to do this research and, you know, release the result of their research, then we can embrace it. But we are in a country whereby as individual, personally for me, in the agribusiness development space, I've always been looking for solution. And we started the journey of As Avocado. Today, As Avocado is now becoming something that people are looking at in Nigeria. Something I sat down and I looked at. What is the problem? If you look at all the crops I'm coming up with today, they are more like underdog, except cashew. Somebody asked me, sir, why don't you put cocoa? Why don't you put... Um, 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 What's this other one? Oh, I forgot now. That why don't I put cocoa and, and uh, this thing? Then you put cashew. I said, yes. Most people still don't understand the huge benefit of cashew. Cocoa is stabilized already. Cocoa is stabilized. And cocoa is so unique that, you know, there are areas where you can do cocoa and there are areas where you can do it. So cashew is a bit rugged and can really work almost everywhere. That's why I put cashew. So if you look at these four things we want to talk about this evening, they are like underdogs, but you can make a lot of money. We are starting from bitter cola. People, I, a, a prof told me that we don't, you can't plant bitter cola. That is the only crop you cannot plant and you cannot harvest. And I laughed. I came across a project in Ivory Coast and another lovely project in, um, in Benin Republic where they now have grafted bitter cola seedlings. Grafted bitter cola seedlings. The meaning of this is your bitter cola can be ready within four years. Bitter cola used to be like seven, 10 years and an average Nigerian the one don't have the time. We are so impatient that we can't do things that require these years. Do you know that we still have old people planting tea in this country and they are making a lot of money? So anytime you hear three years, no, 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 I want something I can do within a short period of time, then cash crop is not for you. So let us go. Bitter cola farming will make you rich within 
a few years is an it's a hot cake product both in in both internationally and, and and in the local market how much is a bitter cola in your area please how much how much is one bitter cola in your area how much is one bitter cola in your area tell me how much then i want to tell you the things we do to before you get that bitter cola there is nothing much that these people do for you to get that how much can you hear me please can you hear me okay please how much is a bitter cola in your area how much is a bitter cola in your area it is an evergreen medium sized forest tree with a heavy spreading crown. Until when I get to Ivory Coast, and it's, it's not so big. It's not like cola nut. You know, we have cola nut, we have bitter cola. It is not as big as cola nut. Hello? It is not as big as cola nut. The trees are not so big, but they have a lot of leaves that brings maximum fruit. A lot, up to 500. 500 balls. And in each of these boards, you can get two knots, three knots, four knots. A lot. A lot. One is 15 naira, sometimes, you know, 10 naira. Let us stick with let us stick with 15 naira. I will show you the economics of all these things. Then you will know what I'm saying. I will show you the economics of all these things. We have less number of people who are into commercial bitter cola farming. I asked you now, and you said no. You don't even know anybody. In, I don't know. I don't have not. I've never seen a, a, you know such in Nigeria, say or even on one acre, on one acre. And that is what I want to do this evening. I haven't done my research. I haven't understand the basic agronomy procedures and everything you need. I want to teach you free of charge. Then it's like for you to take action. It's like for you. I'm just giving you a, a gift because I can't meet you where you are. I can't send your Christmas gift. This is the best Christmas gift I can give you. Going into next year, if you look at these crops, just pick one out of this, and I'm telling you, your financial life will not remain the same. This was due to the fact that it took, it used to be like, you know, it took so long before you have a seed, between seven to 10 years and above. But with the improved variety now, you can plant and harvest bitter cola between four and five years. You think four or five years is, is long? Your kids just enter into the university before you know the guy is having five years. If you set up that farm, you know, based on your child's name, say, oh, your child is Kule, Kule is, I just finished his job. And it's okay, I'm using Kule's farm, one acre of Bitakula, or one acre of coconut, or one acre of cashew, or one acre of um, avocado, in the name of that guy, by the time the guy is coming out, you are sustainable to some extent. I will show you this figure. I want us to talk, then we'll look at the figure. Then every one of us will now begin to look at, yes, I can do it. I can do or I cannot. Cultivating bitter cola from seed takes a long, you know, a longer year. But now we now have the grafting, you know, hybrid bitter cola, which takes shorter time and they are very, very, very um, affordable. I told you that it's different from cola nut. It's different from cola nut. So things we needed for bitter cola production. That is bitter cola for you. The, the leaf, that, that's bitter cola fruit there you can see that's the bitter cola fruit and uh, these are the you know the seed that's the leaf the leaf is just the leaf is like ugu leaves you know with vines and, and and it just cross all over very lovely and the beautiful thing is you know below bitter cola there is no weed when the moment they start forming canopy there's nothing to weed again you are weeding for the first say two years and going forward you are not weeding anything again it's a very clean farm that doesn't really need much pesticide, you know, much um, apicide and other sites and sites that you want to. So let's quickly look at land preparation. Most of these crops, they have the same thing. They have the same land preparation model. So in case I start on this, yeah, but is not very expensive. Just today, I got six pieces for 500 naira. Can you imagine? Six pieces for 500 naira. I don't, I don't know that much. How are we going to calculate that? That's around 90 naira. And I'm 99 and 95 naira they are about uh, yeah excellent so land preparation land preparation now you can clear your land manually and you can also you know clear your land you know mechanically but before we go to land preparation let's talk about land let's talk about land for cash crop you need the land that is yours to some extent if you are leasing land for cash crop then it has to be long lease but most time i say please Try and get your land down here in Ogun State. In, in, in my farm estate, is I sell for 600,000 per acre, and they are already ready to plant farms, you know, already clear. All you need to just brush it up, pack and burn, and, 
and you can plant your crops. So, so you can even get cheaper in other parts of the country, depending on where you are located. You can get cheaper land. Just make sure you do your documentation very, very well. Get your lawyer involved, get your surveyor involved, and you know you know what to do. And when it comes to the input, which is the Sydney, you can always get in touch with me. We have them, you know, a lot here at the at the Go Green Africa's um, uh, seedling uh, farm. So going to land clearing now, land or they'll say land preparation, which encompasses your land clearing. You can clear your land manually by cutting and slashing, packing and burning. You can also do mechanize. The moment the land is beyond, um, say the land is beyond 10 hectares, I always tell people, please don't disturb yourself and say you want to get somebody to, to come and it's better for you to do it mechanically. It's better for you to do it mechanically because it makes um, a lot and, and a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to do that. Please be very careful because this is the time. That's why I want to do it now and do it very fast. For some of you that are going to take action immediately, go get your land, clear the land. January is when we start clearing, land clearing. Start clearing your land by January. For those of you that have land already, and even those of you that are already doing something in Adric, nothing stops you from planting one or two of these trees in your existing farm. So we'll still talk about that. That's why I say get your pen and paper, write down all your questions, then I will shoot it. It's going to be a lovely time together today. So now, having done your land clearing, it depends on how neat you want your farm to be. For me, I love good clean farms. I would then do first plowing, you know, first plowing, second plowing, to make sure that my farm does not have any form of storms or dead so that we can make the layout you know, make a standard layout, the planting layout, so that the old farm can be what can be very clean. Cultivation. What do you need to cultivate? You need the seedling. You need an hybrid seedling, a grafted seedling, and um, I'll give you the price at the end of the day. You need the seedling, and what you do is you, you your soil must uh, be a loose soil that also you know retain water to some extent, but not necessarily being a dampy area. You know, um, you need a pH around between 5.5 thereabout. That's what you need. So for, for bitter cola and cashew, they are very, very, very rugged. Bitter cola, cashew, even coconut. The only one that is a bit specific place among these four crops is avocado. You know, it's avocado. I used to believe that you can only plant coconut beside water, water, water. No, you can plant coconut anywhere, provided you can, you know, put in place standard irrigation. We are changing. The country is changing. Everybody is changing. You have to change. The way we do our Greek is changing. This is a deliberate thing. Like I told you in the first time, you have to do your SWOT analysis. If you can do an acre, do an acre and do it very well. If you can do five, do it and do it excellently well. If you can do 10, it's not about size of land anymore. We have a lot of people with 10 hectares of land that are producing things that people in greenhouse are doing. So don't. it's not about, you don't need to just do something that you have the ability and when i say ability you know knowledge base financial base you know and and, and maintenance base you know um so cultivation you get your seedling you dig a one meter by one meter hole this is different from plantain where you just dig and plant you are doing a one meter minimum of one meter some people can even do two meter by two meter are you getting me is it a bit with depth of one meter. So the whole thing is your breadth, the length, a square one meter and deep one meter. So you put the topsoil in, in, in a particular side and the subsoil in another part, then you introduce your poultry manure, pure poultry manure, you introduce it, mix it with the topsoil, fall it back into the pit. And after a week, you understand, wet, wet the pit, after a week, take the seedlings. That is why you have to book ahead for your seedling now. So that by the time you, you are planting by April, May, you prepare the land, the land is good, you've done all those things, the land has cured. You just take the nursery, place it at the center, put more poultry waste and, 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 and sip it up. Sip it in. You are good. You are good. There are different styles, rectangular planting um, um, style or triangular planting style, depend on the on your land, the topography of your land and the, and the rest. But triangular, you know, planting style is always very good because it helps take more uh, plant per acre. I'm talking acre now because I don't want, I know we have young people among us that probably might not be able to afford hectares 
so that I don't like, oh, what they are talking there is not for us. No, that's why I'm bringing it to Acre. Acre is six plot of land when you are in the southern region, southwest region, in the southeast region. I don't know how they calculate that because it seems as if their plot is 100 by 100. Why our plot here is 120 by 60. So fertilization for me, because they are cash crop, initially you want to boost the growth with MPK. Uh, 15, 15, 20, 20. But if you don't want to spend money on that, just go organic, go with your poultry waste, go with your rabbit waste, go with any of your animal waste, but just make sure they are cured. Uh, are you getting me? What applies to butacola applies to all the crops. What I'm saying now, under this land preparation and everything applies to all, all the crops. Pests and diseases for butacola, there is no much pest at all. Really, there is no much pest except the uh, black ant moving around the trees, which is really not a problem. So I'm not going to encourage you to say, you are going to buy this, you are going to buy that. The only thing you can just do at the beginning is introduce nem uh, nematicide. Nematicide is, um, is a, 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 and um, a, a, how do I put it? Something that help take away or kill nematode. Maybe you've done something like maize, or pepper on the farm for a long period of time. So there probably might be nematode in the soil so that it doesn't affect your plant at the early stage. So you can introduce nematicide when you are planting. You just, we have them in green uh, and so in powder, you introduce it and, uh, and you are good to go. Harvesting, harvesting for beta cola two ways. You see that you allow your beta colas to draw by themselves or when you know that they, are, they, they come red and then, um, yeah, kill soil bond pathogen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So when they, they come red, then the moment you see them turning, turning uh, pale, turning pale, uh, uh, pale cream, then you can, you can harvest them. When you harvest them, you have to put them somewhere for another 10 days. Yes, you put them somewhere for it to soften for 10 days, after which you then peel and you have your, your bitter cola, then you can now dry them. And, and you are good to go. For bitter cola, there is really not much, really. There is not much problem. There is really not much problem. Marketability. Do I still need to talk about the market? <laughs> That's why I asked you, how much is it by your side? Today, if you have a ton, even if you have 10 tons of bitter cola, it won't take, it won't take a day before it will be, you know, will be obtained from you locally. At the international market currently, a kg, a kg is around $25. A kg is around $25. And how many nuts do you think makes a kg? Around 70 to 80, depending on the size, makes a kg $25. If you look at my analysis, where I said 500 naira per, 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 um, per dollar, so multiply 25 times 500, how much is that? That should be around what? So do, do that math. 25 is the lowest price you can get. You can get as high as $50 per kg, even more. The local buyers, they are available. Local buyers are available in, in Lagos, a lot and a lot of them. What do you need to do? You just need to, you know, use your social media platform to say you have cola not, uh, bitter cola from, uh, your bitter cola is ready for sale. You see a lot of people scrambling for your bitter cola. And between now, and the next four years, when your bitter cola will be ready, you will have been able to develop a standard marketing procedure, you know, most especially exporting it to Dubai, to the old Emirates, and any of those Arabic nations. You know, different things that they use bitter cola for pharmaceutical cosmetics and the rest, but that is not what I'm here today. I want to teach you how to plant it. Then talking about the value chain, you know, there are a lot of things you can do with bitter cola. Do you know you can do, um, I don't know whether we are permitted to use this word online. You know, you know that when men take bitter cola, there is is um is it Afro, Afro, aphrodisiac. So you can have a product with bitter cola. Bitter cola, you all know that also help clear the throat. You know, there was a doctor, a professor that pushed the narrative about bitter cola and COVID, the good use of bitter cola during the COVID era. Now you can take bitter cola in your tom tom. You know. Why do you take Tom Tom? Because of the mentor. So by the time you, you mix these things together, there are a lot of things you can do with bitter cola. There are a lot of things you can do with bitter cola. Uh, can I move on? Can I move on? 
go to the chat room and let me know. Move on, sir. Move on. Let me know if you want me to move on. So that we move to coconut. So that I can move to coconut. I can move to coconut. Write down your questions. And uh, I want to be sure that you are here with me. That's why I want you to. So give me the go ahead to move on. Move on. Okay. Move on. Move on. Okay. Move on. Excellent. Move on. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to coconut. 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 Yes. Coconut is another, you know, <laughs> thing that we neglected growing up. All of us, we used to see coconut in, in our compound. The same thing, just like avocado. Just like avocado. We used to see all these things. But we never knew that, uh, hey, hey, we are just playing with a lot of money. Recently, there was a news that Nigeria spent almost, is it 30 billion importing coconut? And the bulk of the importation comes from Ghana and Ivory Coast. Chai, chai, what are you doing? What am I doing? Well, I'm not here to blame you. And I'm not here to blame myself because we don't have the information. I used to tell people in government that we really don't have problem in agribusiness sector. The problem is information and the knowledge, then the conducive environment. If this is available, a lot of private sector will drive the whole thing. We don't really need money from, I've never gotten a subsidy. I've never gotten a loan, an agri loan or anything in my life over a decade in the industry. And most of them I say, I've not been able to assess. Hey, I pity some farmers. Because agri business is your business, not anybody's business. So you must undo it like your business, like you undo every of your business. Because when you make money, you won't take back the money to the government. That is why I tell people, you don't start your business with loan. You can grow your business with loan. So if you are here and you are still thinking loan, loan, to do this thing we are talking about, please log out. Hello? Log out. You must be deliberate to do this. You must be what? Deliberate to do this. Coconut. Coconut. Every part of coconut is money. I, yes, I wanted to remember palm, 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 palm the other time, palm tree. You know, the person told me, why don't you talk about palm and cocoa? I said, those ones are established. They are established. Even cashew established. But you, I just want to enlighten us of cashew again because it's like the easiest among all the cash crops. When I say easiest, even in terms of the cost of setup, is the cheapest among all of them. Just like palm, every part of coconut tree is money. Leave the tree now. Come to the knot. Every part of the knot from the shell. The shell is what we use, you know, in the greenhouse now. As a, 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 a lot, of, we put a lot of money into into the Ghana economy buying cocoa beans, cocoa coil, and the rest. These things are just the peel that you throw away. Those things they throw away and it causes issues in Badagri are supposed to be packed, shred, you know, and mold them. Now you use them as substrate in, in the greenhouse, and you know we spend a lot of money importing this. That's what we call waste. Go to the shell. As a member of the, you know, uh, Nakopman, I saw a lot of products recently when we had the Ubu State meeting in my office. I bought a lot. I bought the BAM, I bought the special scrub, name it, across the value chain. Coconut oil, coconut water, cold press, different, different things, cold press oil. Hot press oil, cake, flake. Do you know now they make coconut flour? You can eat coconut flour like a bar. Well, I did you know. Like, there are a lot of things. Coconut. Why well, you know, we keep running away from these things because, yeah, out in my do before it's ready. Da, 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 da. But the good news is, hello? Type good news, go to the place and say good news. The good news is now we have hybrid, we have dwarf. We have dwarf, we have hybrid of these things that grow between three years and four years. Look at the one in my slide. Look at the knot that comes with 350 knots, you know, three coming with 350 knots, 300 knots, 200 knots. So there is no excuse for us not to do this again. Even if it is two at the back of your house, 
you're also doing something. Even if it is two at the back of your house, you are doing something. Now, what type of soil do you need for coconut? It's just almost the same thing. Like, you know, like we had for bitter cola, almost the same thing. But the beautiful thing is the, the determinant of whatever you do in agribusiness, especially in cash crop, is the seedling. The moment you get it wrong, bam, voila today. Because it's going to take three years or four years before you see the reality. So anytime you are picking your input, make sure you are picking your input from a certified, you know, nursery. Maybe government certified nursery, you know, nursery, individual nursery, like Go Green African nursery down here. People you can hold responsible for your input. This new strategy of planting cash crop is making pits. No more hole. It will shame more. It's pits. When you make one meter by one meter, two meter by one meter, two meter, that is where the investment goes. I tell people, getting it right, standard layout, straight lines, making your pit, putting enough food into the pit for the plants to eat. You will see the growth. I had I bought five recently from the Southwest Coordinator uh, coconut, the dwarf variety, and I planted in my house. I planted it between my two jar trees. The flowers I have in the house, I put them in between it between. They are looking so beautiful. Within five days, I can feel new leaves coming because we already put in place the enough nutrients for the coconut to suck from. Poultry waste. This is time for you to go and get back and be packing all those poultry waste that you're wasting away, you know, beside your farm and things. Don't let them waste away because you need them for your farm. Don't let it waste away, please. Your rabbit urine and your rabbit pool, all these things, make sure you dry them and use it for your farm. It's like, um, it's like you are preparing for YEP. You know, that is the major determinant of ed education in Nigeria. If you don't have YEP, you can't go to any level. But the moment you cross the bridge, you can go. So it's the foundation of the house. You cannot build a duplex on the foundation of a bungalow. It will collapse. So make sure that the foundation of your farm is well what is well done. Please, I'm begging you. Make the pit clean. You know, we are still going to have a video, you know, if I'm chance to show you the feed, how we do these things on the feed, you know. Um, so the same land preparation, just like the one I told you the other time. Cultivation, you need the seedling, nothing else. Seedling, um, the, the manual, uh, nemicide for in case of um, nematode, and you are good. For pest, for pest in, in, in coconut, I think at the, at the the, the early level, uh, stage, you might have gas sulfur or beetles in your farm, depending on what you have around you. Then there's this clause too. I was discussing with a friend yesterday and he told me about, do you know that the coconut leaf is the most rugged leaf for bed house? Uh, yeah. Every bed want to pick on coconut leaves to make their nest. It is always very durable. So the meaning of this is you have to be careful. Let's say you have your farm where you have people planting maize or rice. You need to be very proactive. You cannot tell them to say, oh, don't do maize beside me. It's not possible. Oh, don't do your rice beside me. It's not possible. But you have to be proactive. As your plants are growing, as your plants are growing, make sure you spray, you know, you spray um some some form of um uh, how do i put it now repellent say every every two two months so that when birds are coming to pick pack, pick on your leaves they will just you know they won't like the taste they won't like the aroma and they will fly away because once they start flying into your coconut farm they will mess up the farm they will mess up your coconut because they will patch i don't know whether you've seen birds you see those top coconut, you see a lot of birds there. I don't know the name, they call those yellow birds. They will just put their house in the whole thing. So they will mess your farm up. So you must be deliberate. And, and what I'm preaching to you is hybrid. So it's dwarf, you know, to some extent. You know, hybrid is the dwarf plus the, you know, the, 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 the tall, especially uh, there's this one from, I think Malaysia has something that is doing very well. So they make, they bend them in together and it becomes hybrid. So they're actually going to go tall, but not like the other very tall ones. 
Then it depends on what you want, though. You need oil. Um, the species you are going to plant will differ from someone that just want to um, sell the nuts, say, for powder production or flour, sorry, flour production, flake production, and, and the rest. So, so please make sure you, if you have those kind of feed around you, make sure you, you always apply that. Um, harvesting, harvesting the dwarf variety is not a big deal anymore. It's easy for you to just cut. And now we have a lot of China made, um, um, I don't know what we call this in, in English, where you can just use, you put it on and you can cut your coconut with, uh, and you're good. Marketability, as of today, let's us go to the chat room again. Tell me how much is coconut in your area. I just told you we spend over some 30 billion, you know. Okay, almost every house in Lome, Togo has three coconut trunk, you can imagine. So if we have three, let's say we have two. The moment one million people planted two, that is two million. And this is a country of 200 million in which we have uh, 40 to 45% adults. Chai! 500 naira per knot. Even the 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 <laughs> the feasibility report I'm giving us today is 100 naira that I put there. No, it's even 70 naira. Hello, the feasibility report I'm going to give you about this. I put 70 naira. You can imagine somebody said 500 naira per knot. Don't let us even think about that because if I do the math, if I do the math with 500, all of you will shut down. That is crazy money because the draft, the hybrid. I'm telling you, we give you between 250, 200 knots per year after third year. And it's like wine. Cash crop is like wine. The older they grow, the more they produce. Avocado, cashew, bitter cola, coconut, the more they, they, they get old, the more they produce until when they get to that level and when they start declining again. So let's use at 200, you see the math I did. I use 70 naira. You can imagine. I use 70 naira. Somebody is telling me 500 naira. So let us even use, if I use 100 naira, if I use 100 naira, 250 to 300 naira per big size. In your head, that is Madam Wigge. Can you imagine? 250 to 300. So the, and for the conversation tonight, for this training tonight, I use 70 naira. We are going there. I will give you the price, the spacing, numbers of uh, plant per acre, expected income, everything I'm going to give you. I told you that this is the best gift that I can give you. I don't, silver and gold, I have not. But knowledge about agri business, I have. And that is what I'm going to give you. And I pray that even if it is just 10% of us here today that will practice this, at least I will be happy and uh, you will be happy. We are just, um, we are just 84. And I send this message to over 30,000 Nigerians, both home and abroad. I send the message to over 30,000 Nigerians, both home and abroad. For me, I understand that um, we're a country where we don't really cherish anything that comes our way free. If you say 5,000 naira, 10,000 naira from this, you see over 100 people will come around and this. So let's remember we are not selling to consumer because we are giving consumer price. Yes, I'm not talking, that is why I'm saying 70 naira. Hello? I've been around to understand the law. Consumer price is that, that's why I asked how much in your area, but I'm saying that what I'm going to use for you today is just 70 naira. So when you look at 70 naira to consumer price, you can see that it can still take all manners of things, say logistics, say middlemen, whatever that is coming across the whole thing, it can still take it. I'm talking to productions now. I've mentioned those that can still play across the value chain. You don't want to plant, you can go into oil processing, which can be cold or, or hot press. You might probably go into chips processing. You can go into flower processing. You can go into accessory processing. There are a lot of money to be made from coconut. There are a lot of money to be made from coconut. Do we proceed? Do we proceed? Give, let me know. Do we proceed? Am I making sense? Am I communicating? Please give me feedback. Am I communicating? Am I making sense? Or am I wasting your time? Which one am I doing? Which one am I doing? So that, yes, 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 sure. Uh, I don't know that we should proceed, but I'm saying, do, am I communicating? Uh, am I wasting your time? Okay, okay. Making sense, Mr. Toby, Toba, to I mean, So let's talk about cashew. Let's talk about cashew. Cashew, let's talk about cashew. You know, it's so unfortunate that um, 
cashew is one of those things that would not be able that would not be able to maximize its potential in Nigeria. It's so so unfortunate. It's so so unfortunate that would not be able to maximize the potential of cashew in Nigeria. When I say maximize the potential, the only thing we sell in Nigeria is the nuts. Yes, the nuts brings a lot of money, but I've not seen a cashew juice. I remember I had I did a project six years ago. I don't know whether uh, the owner of the project is in today. I did a project in um, in Edo State, and um, you know they they have a lot of cashew there, uh, Warake to be precise. And my host, I I always leave for the farm five a.m. in the morning. Then around eleven twelve, my host will come to the farm. And she will give me the juice. She will give me a cashew juice. Hey, cold cashew juice, the red one. The taste is heavenly. The taste is heavenly. And one thing I notice is I have strength because, you know, it contains a lot of alkaline. And when your alkaline level is, you know, high, you don't really get up. You know, even malaria and all these yeah, yeah, things are not coming near you. I spend one month in that place. I take cashew juice every day. Super, excellent. What am I saying? You cannot go to the supermarket today and buy cashew juice. We don't have any natural cashew juice. Our cashew will waste away. The only thing is, I shall plug in cashew, Emam, Igolondolized water. Don't go with my nuts. You can eat the pork, drop my nuts. Ogomo shop became a now sold name because of cashew. And a lot of people are still buying land there and planting. Kogi, Ogun State, we did 1 million tree project last year. Ibarra, Ibarra Olile, I did it in Ibarra Olile Asis. Ekiti, you can do it here. Osho, you can do it here. Anywhere you are in the southern region of cashew will grow. So what is stopping us? And I told you that it's the cheapest Cashew seedling, you know, very good one, hybrid one is just around 500 naira. You can even get it as, you just that what you will get might not be okay. If you want a very good one, around 500 naira. What we have in our nursery in Gogreen, Africa, I think it might be sell for 500 naira. But you can get 100 naira, 200 naira, 300 naira, although the yield might not be okay. Now, I will show you the number of cashew you need per acre. And you look at this figure, we look at the, the command, you know, the economics of, of these things I'm telling you. I'm just preparing us to see that most of the things we are taking for granted has a lot of money. The demand for Nigeria cashew in the international market is huge, massive. Every both on season and off season, they are looking for cashew nuts. They are looking for cashew nuts. People are looking for cashew nuts. So you can imagine if you have an acre of cashew, an acre of cashew will take around 70 trees. I will go to that and I will show you. I'm almost running up there. We'll go to the economics and I will take questions. You know, I hope you are enjoying yourself. So land preparation, almost the same thing. In case of cashew, it's even easier. But for me, it's a new thing I learned, you know, uh, from, from India. Pit, pit farming is huge. You make a, a pit of one meter by one meter or two meter by two meter. This time around, it's not cut lasso. It's not cut lasso. Shovel and digging. Deliberate pits. Um, what do we call this thing besides okay, wait. Chamber. You have to just make something square and fine. And you pop more tree waste with your top soil. Pour it there as if you are filling the land back. Then release water. Let it be there a week or two before you now bring in your plant and you put it in the middle. You will see the growth will be so very fast, and it, you know it will spread because the plant is is like a baby, a baby that you give birth to a baby. Nothing mother can resonate with this, and you are lactating. The baby is taking the milk. You see, within two weeks, three weeks, the baby is changing, and everybody will be like, ah, this baby is changing. Oh, look at her cheeks. Look at this because it's taking the right thing. Once you give your plant the right nutrient, your plant will give you the result you desire. Just like your fish, just like your bird, just like your child. Weeding. You see, 
One thing with all this crop I'm telling you is, you probably might not even need to do all this breeding thing because you can intercrop um, you know, in between. You can do legumes, you can do vegetables. There are lots you can do. At least the first two years, you can see intercrops in these farms. And by the time you take whatever you plant out of it, there's what we call ring weeding. You can always do ring weeding, you know, because of the spacing. Some of these plants are seven meter by seven meter. Some of them are 7.5 by 7.5. Avocado is five meter by five meter. All these things that will show you as, as we go on. So the same, you know, preparation, you know, cultivation, fertilization for cashew, beetles, bugs, and some type of um, um, uh, other stuff that you can handle, not necessarily need big problem when it comes to pests and, and that. Another lovely thing is any of these cash crops that shade uh, is only coconut that does not really have enough shade. Avocado has a lot of shade. Cashew has a lot of shade. Um, uh, cola has a lot of shade. And you can now introduce beehives under these plants. So you have a 70 trees in your farm. Nothing stops you from having 30 to 40 beehives in the farm. And the beehive is giving you two liter of honey Multiply by 35, that is uh, what? 70 liters. How much is honey today? You can use one stone eh, to kill 10 birds in the agribusiness once you have the knowledge. And the farm with beehives, nobody will just throw there and say they want to go. There's nothing to even steal in Bitako now, coconut. And these are things that people will not even come to your farm and steal earlier. So let us proceed so that we now go to the main thing, the economics of these four crops. Let us proceed. Now we'll talk about, um, I'll talk about avocado. This is the new guy around the block. This is the new guy around the block, you know, especially the ass variety. Yes, the rice, yeah, Quara also do cashew. Cashew does very well. You know, almost every it's a very rugged plant. Just you just have to be doing, you have to be deliberate, not that you will just plant. I see a lot of people mistake they make in cash crop is because it's easy. Cash crop is very easy, especially for those of you in diaspora, for those of you that do nine to five jobs, for those of you that are very busy, you know, it's very easy. You can always go there once in three months, you know, once in four months. But that does not mean you just leave your farm. No. The younger generation, I'm begging you. This news is for you guys. If you invest in top 10 acre, a penny of this crop, in five years, you are settled. These crops will pay your bill. These crops will pay your bill for the next 30 years of your life. I'm telling you, take your time and choose understand your personality and choose any of this. It will take care of you for the next 30 years of your life. I will not buy an iPhone 16 when I can buy a land and plant cash crop. I will not because I know that by the time my cash crop is paying me, if there's iPhone 50 by that time, I can buy. Within five years or four years, iPhone 16, will not be in vogue again. But if I put that money now in my cash crop farm, I know whatever that will be in vogue by that time, I can conveniently buy. I'm talking to the younger generation here, listen to me. Please, learn to delay gratification. Investment is the only thing. I've analyzed the fact that we're in a country where things has really changed. Things has really, really, really changed. Okay, as avocado. As avocado is the new guy is around the block, it's purely for export. Today, take your time, just start as avocado. Discover a lot of things that we are missing in Nigeria. We are not even nowhere, when you talk about as avocado, nowhere up until when I started pushing this three years ago. Today, you type as avocado, you see the Avocado Society of Nigeria, you see some of the things we've done with the former president, Olusha Gomba Sojo, and stuff we are still doing. Every day, every day. I said the bitter cola thing. What we are going to do with it is massive. Coconut, what we are going to do with the coconut is massive. Cashew is the only thing that I'm not, I'm not promising, you know, so much of. But coconut, ah, everybody must plant coconut. 
Everybody must plant bitacola. Everybody must plant avocado. Even if you can't do acre, operation minimum of two per house, we must drive it across southwest, across the south, south, across southeast, even the, the ones that can go in the north. We must do it. It's a must. Nobody will take you off your off that lane. You are the one that will take yourself off the lane. So talking about avocado, it's only avocado that is a bit complicated among all these crops because it requires water. So before you do avocado, act rightly. No, if you don't have money for irrigation, don't go near avocado, especially the has variety. Don't go near it at all if you don't have, you know, plan for irrigation. But if you have plan for irrigation, bravo, excellent, awesome, and you have the money, Avocado is the Okafapata of them. In my projection here, I use, I think, 100 Naira or something. But go, as I'm speaking to you, just go online and type the cost of avocado. An average of the smallest avocado should be a dollar. The demand, I have over 12 MOU signed already. When we don't even have up to 20 or 30 standard hectare cross board of us avocado in Nigeria, as of today, over, I have 12, three from Dubai that disturbs me almost every day. Avocado, 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 we need now. We send, we put in the plane, you send it, you send it to us now. We can pay you before you send. Most of these things, is, there is money. The same thing with bitter cola. Bitter cola, not the enter vessel. It's by here. Before you know it, pan, pan, 3 kg, 10 kg, 5 kg. Even if you don't have farm now, nothing stops you from trading. That is why I say I'm also talking about the value chain. Nothing stops you from exporting them now. All you have to do is do the search and look at who is looking for it. Then go look at where you can get it. Go to Osho, AKT. They have it in large quantity. But the, the unfortunate thing is they are not planting. So if you are taking and you are not putting back, it will keep reducing, just like our timbers. We keep cutting woods for Shako. We keep making Shako, Shako, Shako. Eh, Shako is Shako in us now. You're taking, you are not putting back. So there are a lot of money. You have to wake up. You have to do what? Wake up. So as for avocado, avocado, just like every one of them, you know, you get the rice seedling. It's grafted. Why I'm pre preaching this to you is the seedlings, you know, in our nursery are grafted. Except the cashew and um, and the coconuts. You can't graft coconuts. But for the bitter cola and the avocado, they are grafted. So by grafting them, they are becoming disease-free. Then you are reducing the, you know, the production year. Are you getting me? And they are also self pollinated Beautiful, beautiful solutions. For us, avocado, the market is massive. Fertilization, you know, at the early stage, nothing much. But as it grows, you need to start using a barium based, you know, uh, um, pesticide to because beetles, there's this part, type of beetles that eat the leaves, it stays in the soil. So you can, if you go near your avocado and you dig the soil, you see them tiny, tiny, tiny. They come out in the evening and they make holes. You know, on on, the, on your avocados leaves, they love the leaves, so they perforate the leaves. So you have to be very very proactive when you're spraying. You spray the base. You just open it and spray the base, and um, and you are very very good, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, did I make your day? Did I make your day? Um, <laughs> yes, my friend from uh, my friend from Mexico. Yes. Uh, probably I'm going to give you a floor to talk to us to uh, after I take this um, the economic side of this. Yes, that's my very good person from from Mexico. Saludo Desai. So we, you know we 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 do a lot of things across board. Nigeria is a country that everybody wants to deal with. It's so unfortunate that our leadership don't understand that we're a country that has potential. We're a country with great minds and great people. Um, we don't really have enough representation. That's the problem. I remember that I've been speaking with this, my partner from Mexico for the past two years. When we started the project, Ghana started theirs, and today Ghanaians are ahead of us because they got support from the government. That's the problem. But for me, I don't believe in waiting for the government. You have to just keep moving ahead because at the end of the day, government comes, government go. If you wait for any one of them, you know, then you are going to be in problem. We process avocado for export from Kenya. Can you imagine, Madam Miriam? I, I, I stay in Kenya, I stay in Kent. 
and um, I've done a lot of uh, projects with uh, the Kenya uh, Avocado Society. I think I should have one or two of them here. My partner is also from Kenya. Um, we do a lot, a lot of avocado stuff at the grassroots now in Nigeria. Uh, it won't really show, say, until the next three, four, five years. Uh, avocado, these people like you that can really let us know the, the money that is in avocado. The money in avocado is massive. We are talking billions of dollars. We are talking billions of dollars. And we have a very conducive environment for it, especially those in the South South, Edo to be precise. Good soil, excellent, excellent soil for avocado. So let us produce, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the uh, let's go to the economics. I know those most of you are waiting for this. Oh, what happened just now? Can you believe this? Something just happened. Okay. Let's go to the economics. Can you see my screen, please? Let me know if you can see my screen. Hello, my feedback. Hello, is my hello? Is this showing? We have a pack house, but we okay. I like that. That where is that conversation? You can always get to me. I'm going to drop my. I'm going to drop my phone number now. I'm dropping my phone number now, um, so that you can get to me in case you need anything or you want solution. What I do, I do total solution from input to land. Uh, I sell land. I do land clearing. Land preparation, layout, I supply seedlings, I do farm setup. The only thing I don't do, uh, my company doesn't do, is farm management. So, what we do is we get somebody for you, we train the person for you to manage your project because we always have a lot of projects across Africa that takes us around. So, we don't manage farm because we don't want to disappoint anybody. But the total solution across all these things, we do for you, we do for you. And we are very, very affordable, but we are not cheap. We are very, very affordable. We are not cheap. Now, um, I'm, dro I'm dro dropping something for you so you can save my number. And my name is Ambassador Adeni Isholabumi, um, the chairman of IE Groups, um, the convener of the Go Green Africa Initiative. So I'm dropping my name and phone number so that you can just, okay, let me just drop my phone number plus that uh, plus, to three four eight zero six five double two double zero seven four. That's my number. Uh, so my name is Ambassador Dini. Please, I'm asking, is it that the cashew cannot go in the not like in a place in Gombe? I don't know much about Gombe, but nothing stops you from getting it. Not just one knot or two. And cashew is very fast. Within four weeks, is up. So get a knot or two. For me, that is the way I operate. I don't believe that something cannot. You know, I remember when I started bringing in. Um, apple before we, the issue, you know, I bring in apple and, I, and you know, they keep working. So, most time when you say, Can it grow in some, some say, No, 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 it's not the planting region, it's not this, it's not that. Nothing stops you from testing it. Anytime you are out of Gumbi or somewhere, you see a cashew, get the nut, get it, um, get pure water nylon, get the very good soil, put the nut in the pure water nylon, pour water, put it in a good place. Within five to seven days, it will sprout. Turn the knot, you know, where they took the pop from, where you have the pop, the one you eat, where you take it from, turn it up that way and, and put it there. Within four to five days, or maximum say seven days, it will sprout and it will come up. So test it, plant it in Gobe yourself. Put it in your soil in Gobe. What I eat, if it grows, it grows. If it dies, it dries. Tomorrow you can say, yes, I planted it in Gobe. It did not grow. Let us forget all this book we are reading. Let us forget all the things that professors are telling us. Nothing stops us from practicalizing things ourselves. And in life, is it that yes or no? Is it that it works or it did not work? So I'm telling you, sir, please, Suleiman Abubakar, make sure you try this and get in touch with me. Who knows? You will be surprised. It will grow and it will do very well. It will grow and it will do very well. So let's look at the economics of these four things no, let's look at the thing. This is where most of you have been waiting for. Oh, I'm not getting this thing. Why now? This is what you've been waiting for. This is what you've been waiting for. 
Yes, yes, yes. Can you see my slide? If you can see my slide, let me know. Yeah, we're about to round up. I believe you have your questions for me already. Can you see, can you see, can you see the slide? I said the cash crops with huge potential come 2022. And what I put here is to do justice to the thing, you know, when you say feasibility study, business plan and every of those things, the basic and the principal things you want to see are the things I put here for you. Ladies and gentlemen, um, you can see my slide. Let me know, let me know if you can see my slide. Yes, we can. Okay, good, yes. So let us start with duration, duration. The meaning of that is how many years will it take before they start fruiting? Number one, cashew, three years. Bitter cola, four years. That is talking about the variety that we have in our nursery. I'm talking about the hybrid. I'm talking about the grafted ones too. Bitter cola, four years, is grafted. Coconut, three years, is hybrid. As avocado is certified grafted seedling. Not grafted alone, certified for duration. Cashew, three years. Bitter cola, four years. Coconut, three years. As avocado, three years. Planting space, number two. Planting space. For cashew, 7.5 meter by 7.5 meters. Bitter cola, 7.5 meter by 7.5 meters. Coconut, 7.5 meters by 7.5 meters. As avocado, five meters by five meters. Am I communicating somebody? Am I communicating? Am I communicating? Okay, yes, okay. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Okay. Plant population, plant population. The meaning of this is plant per acre. At 7.5 by 7.5, you are looking at 70 trees per acre for cashew, 70 per acre for bitter cola, 70 per acre for coconut, 150 per acre for avocado. Let me take that again. 70 per acre, 70 trees per acre for cashew, 70 trees per acre for bitter cola, coconut, 70 trees per acre. Why ask avocado, 150 trees per acre. Cost of hybrid seedlings, cost of seedlings, cost of seedlings, you know, cost of seedlings. We are, I'm doing justice to almost all the things you want to ask, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, it's only a few things you'll be able to ask me. Cost of seedlings for cashew is 500 naira, bitter cola 2000 naira, um, coconut 2000 naira, as avocado 3000 naira. But as avocado has a clause, the Avocado Society of Nigeria only sells to their members. They only sell to their members. Avocado Society of Nigeria, they only sell seedlings to their members. Hello? So they only sell to their members. Yield per acre. Cashew. You have, we're looking at between 20 and 20 something, but let's use 20, 20 kg per tree. When we say 20 kg per tree, we have 70 trees. So that is 20 kg times 70, and the kg is 800 naira. So when you multiply 20 kg per 70, by 800 naira, you're looking at around 1,120,000. Okay, so for bitter cola, 200 knots, you know, per tree minimum. I like being, you know, I like using the, you know, the minimum. 200 knots. Somebody told me that 100 naira, 200 naira. So we are using 70 naira here for bitter cola. 200 times 70, 70 trees times even 50 naira. I'm using 50 naira for bitter cola. So 200 knots times 70 trees times 50 naira. You are looking at 700,000 naira per acre. That is after three years. Don't forget your waiting period is over. The fourth year. The fifth year, I told you, is like wine. The older, the better. It keep getting better. This is the lowest after your waiting period. Coconut, 200 knots for hybrid. You can use 150, but say 200 knots at 70 naira times 70 trees. You are looking at around 980,000 naira 
in Opaica. Worst case scenario, lowest. Avocado, minimum of 200 um, fruits per tree, multiplied by uh, 150 trees, multiplied by 15 naira. Those that understand avocado is like, eh, for where? But just use 15 naira. You are looking at 1 million 500,000 per acre after your waiting period of three years. If I want to go into your cost of production, none of these things, if by the time you had, say, you even buy your land, you buy your land, you do your land preparation, you buy the seedlings and everything, none of this, you will make it your first, your first sales, you will make everything. I'm telling you, some of them have done like avocado, have done, like cashew, have done, coconut, I'm doing 10 hectares this year. Um, as we're clearing now, as we speak, we're clearing, preparing for 10 hectares. Peter Cola, we are also planting. So when to plant? When to plant is between April to May for all of them at the onset of rainy season. Even if you have irrigation in place, which some people have tried and is working, you can plant at any time if you have very good irrigation. You see the word very, very good irrigation. But I say, why not plant at the onset of rain so that at least the, the three month rain, the consistent three month rain can be very good for them so that they can grow very well. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe I've been able to make your day. I believe the present, the Christmas present, I promise you, what it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Now we are going to go back to take your questions. Just type your questions. I will take your questions and, um, you know, I do justice to it. So that you're going back today, you're going back renewed, fresh, and you are strategizing on the next thing to do. Once again, my name is Ambassador Deni Shorabumi, and I want to say thank you for sharing this one and a half hours with me. And I believe I've been able to make, you know, some impact in your life. Thank you very much. So, please, you have any question for me, I am open to take your question. I am open to take your question. Please, let's take it one after the other. Um, the first question I have here is from Mr. Ashmak Shahidin. So, if I'm to invest in Nas Avocado, can you help procure the Sydney? Or do I need to join the Avocado Society of Nigeria to enable me buy CBD? If you what does it require to become a member? Yeah, fortunately, I am the CEO of the um, Avocado Society of Nigeria. The beautiful thing is, why you need to join the Avocado Society of Nigeria? You know, I told you that the for avocado is hundred percent export. It's hundred percent export. So, you, you know, we come together at the at the association level. We are like I told you, we have like twelve MOU signed already. So we are producing and we are selling under the umbrella. So as a member, you, your firm might be in Ashijire or anywhere, but you are, you are having the stamp of the association by the time you want to sell your, your, your fruit. We are also sitting together to decide the price we want to sell our fruit by the time we want to sell. So that's, these are some of the things you get. You're also going to get 100% um, support from the association by training you on what to do. We also have the consultancy part where you can pay and they set up your farm for you. Uh, the seedling is 3,000 for members. Membership registration is online, just www.nigeriaavocado.com or .org. You will see there is 50,000 for you to be a member. It comes with your certificate. It comes with your membership accessories and that, that, that's that for avocado. But for coconut, we have Nakopman, Nakopman Pastate. I am the vice chairman of Nakopman of State. That is the, the national, you know the body for for anything coconut so you can also talk to us at nakopman uh if you're in the if you're in lego anywhere you have we have nakopman there for bitter cola we don't have anything of bitter cola is new i will say is one of the projects i'm taking up is new so um the whole agronomy thing the knowledge and everything is here is here so you can always consult me like i told you i'm highly affordable highly highly affordable but i'm not cheap you understand you do with me you get the best so for cashew, that one no get problem. We have the cosan, the association of cashew, but there is no really big issue with all these things. Anytime you are ready, you are good to go. I believe I've answered your question. Uh, give me a thumb up. Give me a thumb up if um, the answer is um, 
satisfied you know, enough. So let me go down. Let me go move down to. Can we get a slide and recording of this presentation? Yes, I'm recording it. I believe we should be able to. Uh, you can't get it in terms of I don't know you. I don't know. I'm going to send it to you, but I should. I will put it on my on my YouTube or or other or on my other social media platform. So oh, that's Mr. Gwenda Jibwa. <laughs> so I'll put it on, on on my social media platform. Then we can see it there. I promise to do more of these by the grace of God. If um, if if Nigerians do not send us away from their country. <laughs> wow, 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 wow! Very much. Thank you, Elijah. Thank you. Please, can we have the transcript or recording of the lecture sent to us? We'll try our best to make that available. Can I get coconut seed? I don't have coconut seed. I only have coconut seedlings. Uh, I believe you should be able to get seed from uh, from Badagri uh, and the rest. Go to there. Um, can we get recording? Yes, we say. How do one have access to avocado? So just type avocado site of nature. Just Google it. You get to the website. Fill the form. Make your payment into the avocados account. Everything. The ideas is very unique and straightforward. Yes, is very unique and superior. Uh, I'm seriously loaded. Thank you very much. Ambassador, I can't thank you enough. Thank you very much that you enjoy my gift. What are the requirements for membership of registration of Avocado? Go to the, the to Avocado Society website, you, you get it there. How much does agricultural land cost in Southern Nigeria per acre? I can only tell you about my uh, farm estate. It's 600 per acre, ready to plant, um, it's secure environment, and very good area. I don't know of any other southern region. Some you can get cheaper than that, far, far, far cheaper. You get 200, 300, 400, depend on the proximity to, to the road, security, and every other thing. Uh, thank you very much, this massive information. I really, really appreciate it. Okay. Is 73 per acre for us not too much? I didn't say 73 per acre, I said 150. That translates to 165 plants per hectare. For us, avocado is actually 375 trees per hectare. So 70 is not for us. Us is 150 per acre at five meter by five meter, which is 17 feet by 17 feet. Okay, okay. I think there is no other question. There's no other question. Oh, excellent. No other questions. No other questions, I think. We're about to round up now. We want to round up now. Okay. So thank you very much for you know staying by. Um, I'm I'm trying to see how much does your consultation cost. No, 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 no. Consultation depending on. Um, uh, I'm not a typical professional. Let me put it this way. So don't worry. Uh, most people that know me, I've never charged for that. You know, for over 12, 13 years. So maybe when I get to Canada or America. Abby, <laughs> where we charge per hour, then uh, we'll be charging. My guys are in the house. Uh, Ogato Bati, I mean, you, I can see you. Thank you very much for attending this event. So don't worry, you can talk to me. I'm always free 8 p.m. Just give me a call, anything from 8 p.m. or drop a message for me on WhatsApp. That's only now I have woman abroad. So you can always drop a message on that line. I will surely get back to you. I'm here to impact. And uh, that's the only thing I can do to help my society, to help my country. And I believe that for those of us that will do, you know, try and do one or two things here, our financial life will not remain the same. Um, well, it's unfortunate for this person talking about, I'm not here to receive my measure business certificate payment. It's so unfortunate for this conversation to be coming on this kind of platform. I'm so, so, so disappointed. I'm so, so, so disappointed. I don't know you, I can't see your name, but I'm really, really disappointed if you're having this kind of conversation here. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to bring um, my very good friend from my eco. I'm trying to bring him, give him opportunity to say hello to us, if he's available to say hello to us and also motivate us about the potential in, um, in, in, in avocado. Yeah, good. What are you, afternoon, are you being in my eco? Prado. You can unmute yourself. I'm giving you go ahead to unmute yourself. Okay. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Thank you very much for, for this uh, 
presentation for this keynote. It's very amazing. So it's opportunity. It's it's a hard job. It's a, um, I see uh, all your presentation. I am very glad for share this information from Abuzon to all the African growers, especially the people who lives in Nigeria and, and Kenya and other countries uh, besides Nigeria. So um, I see your presentation and I'm very glad to hear about all the avocado product. Uh, I'm I'm living here in Mexico, in Michoacán. As you know, in Michoacán, we have about more than 170,000 hectares only for Haas avocado. And the Haas and the berries is the second, uh, biz, uh, the big, uh, product that we export from Michoacán. Um, in, in the beginning, when we talk uh, for first time, we have a lot of projects for growing in, in Africa. So you are the ambassador and you are the, uh, I know you are the leader for this. I'm very pleased for working with you. So uh, you have a big responsibility for, for doing this as well as you can with, with all the people, with all your team. And uh, the the avocado industry in Mexico it's it's a it's a it's a big history. But the most important important reason that I can share with yours is uh, we beginning the we uh, re begin <laughs> the export to the U.S. country to Asia and and Middle East, especially in my company we are exporter signs. Um, maybe 20 years ago with my my parents, but at this time we have, um, as you know, we have two two big two business relations with the avocado industry. The first one is the certified nurseries, uh, and you and we are work together for get the best varieties uh, or or the best selection for has avocado for try to to help and improve the crops in 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 Africa, especially in, in Nigeria. The second one is the the all export production from all the yield export production for the different markets. Uh, at this time, we export to the US as first time because the most than the 19% from all our export produce or fresh produce export to it's the US market because it's our neighbor here me, uh, with the United States with, with Mexico, you are we are neighbors and we have uh, the, the principal terminal markets. Uh, we are a distance from 18, 20 hours from Michoacán, Mexico, from the state of Michoacán to the, for, for example, to California border with the US or the McAllen, Texas border are the two principal entries from our products. Another, another export that we usually do every month, every week, we export to, to the north of Europe, to the Bremerhaven, Bremerhaven port and the Rotterdam port. And this avocado industry in Michoacan, it's, it's old, but, uh, but the exports is really relative new in the last 20 years. So at this time, Mexico, the Michoacan, only the Michoacan state, we export more than 2.5 million metric tons per year. So this is a big opportunity. And the second business, it's growing every year because we have a big opportunity here with all the international markets. And, and maybe you can explore this with your team, with your Abosom team and another, another producers is the berries business because the berries business, it's growing every year, every year, every year, it's growing and growing. And at this time, it's the second most important business in, in, in Mexico from agricultural uh, uh, exports to to a different market. So, but I, I'm learning today from you uh, about the bitter cola and another crops. I don't have experience in that, but it's so amazing the the lot of opportunities that you have with your with your teammates, with your with your partners, with the Abosón members. So uh, the most important it's the it's organized, it's, it's for the organization, it's try to get the best practices, the best uh, agricultural practices and get the best experience for doing business in the different terminal markets. But the most inter important thing or situation that I think in, in here, because we are more than 2,650 only avocado producers in the Michoacan state. 
mm. more than two two thousand and six hundred people. We are not. We are not up have, to. We are not up to. We are not up to hundred in Nigeria. We are not up. To yeah. That. Yeah, but you have a big, a big, you know, it's a big project. I'm trying to to improve the lives, the lives, get the jobs, improve their lives from a lot of people, and get better organized very well from from one team that can be the leader. If you if everybody tries to do by themselves, only alone in this avocado industry, you can, you you won't. You know, you need you need a, a society like in Mexico. We have a PAM. A PAM is like the national produce packers, and and for doing this, and we are organic, very well organization for doing on obviously the obviously working in the orchards with the quality and all the international quality standards for different markets. We have the the recognize recognized from. All this um, certification from Primus, from you know, from Halal, from Kosher. We work every day for get and, and, and get the best practices in the orchards. Obviously, we are trying all the days, all the time. We we work for improve all the uh, sustainability in the orchards. But the most important is the respect with the growers. The growers need respect from everybody. So we are working. The most important situation is work with the respect with the growers or the farmers because they are the, the basement for all this industry. It's not the packing houses, it's not the government. It's not, you know, you need work with the with the growers and the producers. It's the most important situation for growing and, and try to improve the situation in your country with your team. Thank you very much, uh, Prado. Um, don't forget, we have a lot to do. Like I keep saying, one thing that I do is to always live as if there is no tomorrow. Whatever you can do to help other people, do it. And one thing that is yep. lacking in my country is information and knowledge. To make money, yeah, my country yeah, yeah, happens yeah. to be one of the best country in the world to make money. Nigeria happens to be one of the best. I can imagine, I know the volume of you know, people that want to come to this country every day. I know people of, you know, people from all over the world, they want to come do business in Nigeria. But we Nigerians, we don't even understand business. We don't understand, but most time I don't blame because we don't have the right information. We don't have the right knowledge. And that is what I've said for the rest of my life. Anything I practice and works for me, I'm going to escalate it. Because the beautiful thing is you cannot, like you said, you cannot do it alone. I cannot make your money. You cannot make my money. We can all make good money for ourselves, you know? And I wish every one of you attending this evening that congratulations. Please try to process this information. Seek for more knowledge. And in doing that, you will learn more. I can see Cardillo, uh, Fabrizio Cardillo. Would you like to say hello to my people in Nigeria? Let me unmute you. Uh, it's becoming an international conversation now. Okay, thank you. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. How are you? How are everybody? Uh, I'm calling from uh, Kenya. I'm calling from Kenya too. Uh, and uh, here in Kenya, we are approaching now the season. Next month, uh, February, January, February season start. And a very, very interesting conversation. Really, I've learned a lot. And I wish to come also very soon to Nigeria. To, Welcome. To, I'm, going to like, uh, Prado, I'm going to like Prado was saying, it's good. It's not a single. This is a, it's a it's a business done by the team, and the growers like Prado. I really like what also Prado was saying that the the, the team is the is the basis the growers because we can have the best equipment in this world, but no way if the product is not good from the farm, from the forest seedling. In Kenya, we have this challenge. In fact, I would like to also change with Prado for an issue for seedling here for Kenya, because we have a good pack house. For new news, our friend, uh, is, uh, uh, we have been awarded this year the best pack house in East Africa. We, we are very happy. We are very happy. Uh, because we do really good treatment, but like Prado was saying, there is no best equipment or best pack house without best avocado. There is no possible. It's not possible. 
So this is very important. I'm really happy to be part of this conversation. And I hope with the collaboration, international collaboration, we can grow together to meet the needs of the consumer. That's what uh, I really uh, pray. Thank you very much, Cadillo. I really Thank appreciate you. that. I had a lot of international friends, you know, coming on board. By the grace of God, I'm going to, you know, going forward, I'm going to reduce this crop to three. Yes, three, 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 three. And, and this webinar will come again. I'm going to reduce it. Um, oh, Mr. Ben, I can see you waving. I'll bring you on board. I'm going to take cashew out of it. And we're going to stick with coconut. We're going to stick with bitter cola. And we're going to stick with ass avocado. We're going to stick with this. And um, I'm telling you, we will not relent until you are successful. We will not relent until you are successful. Mr. Lego Ben, please, you have the floor. I'm asking you to unmute yourself. Great people across the world are talking to us this evening. Awesome. You have the floor, sir. You have the floor. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're doing a great job. A great job. For the greater tomorrow. Going green is the best way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I'm, I'm going to record this. No, it's already recorded. Um, we will get this and, and I'll put on my social media platform. 2022 is going to be great. You know, it's going to be great. Please, in case you need any information, get in touch. The ones we don't have, you know, capacity for, will link you to the people that can help you. I love you from those side. God bless you all. And do have a lovely night rest. And happy new year. God bless you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You can put on your videos. Let me see your beautiful faces. You know, put on your videos. Put on your videos. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Let's meet again by the grace of God. We'll be meeting again whereby we'll be talking about some other opportunities uh, across. Don't forget, you need to diversify. Don't forget, you need to have a extra source of income before you can really live a good life in a country like Nigeria. Don't dull yourself. Seek for information, process information, get knowledge, process knowledge, and you'll be happy doing that. God bless you. God bless you. I love you all. I love you all. Bye, 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 bye.